Well, hello there, humans, bees, earthlings, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and if you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing a QA. and a I've been promising to do this for ages, and you guys have been good enough to put a whole heap of questions up that you wanted answered uh, from yours truly. So we're going to rip in and do this, and I have basically just left the video running in the background, uh, semi-edited just to the major engagements in a couple of games, so it gives us something to talk over while we're uh, enjoying the reveal. Let's go, baby. First cap off the rank, Chris Lee Lewis. So was it hard to convince your wife that this YouTube thing would go somewhere? And do you get that look I get from mine when you're playing the game? No, I don't. Because it's my job. <laughs> she doesn't really hang out. I don't play the game in front of my wife, particularly. I've got my own little office upstairs. Um, but in terms of convincing my wife, I'll tell you the story behind how it all came about. I don't keep secrets from my missus. And I don't drink. I don't go out. I don't do a whole lot of anything. I'm kind of like a, a little... I don't know. It's not It's not like it's hard to figure out what I like. And um, one day we were moving and I paid for the removalist van in cash. And I'd had to set up a, a card to get Google AdSense payments. And I wasn't spending it on anything. I was just sitting there. And I wanted to like surprise her one day, but I was too nervous about doing it because I was a little bit embarrassed about what I was doing. You know, this is not the norm for a middle-aged bloke to suddenly become a YouTuber. And the... Uh, I paid for it in cash and she's like, where did that money come from? And I'm saying, well, I've got to talk to you about something. And she was beside herself. She's like, what the hell is going on here? She was really worried, like something had happened or, you know, I was going to run off with a secretary or I'd, I'd fallen over and I don't know, whatever. And I said to her, look, I'm a YouTuber. And she thought it was a big, um, hilarious thing, actually. She took it really well. She was just in stitches when she watched the videos and everything. And then... Um, one day, and this is also the background to, you know, how I actually started becoming a professional YouTuber. She said to me, you know, you love what you do. Um, you're enjoying it and you make enough money from it that you can call it a job. If I had something that I could do full time that I love doing, you wouldn't see me for dust and you should go and do this full time. So it was completely up to her. Um, I would never have gone full time with this without her support. And she didn't just support, she pushed me towards it because I was so enjoying the moment and, and I was, you know, really, really energized by it. So in answer to your question, no, it's not hard. She is the whole reason that I, I am a YouTuber. Shouldn't iPad PUBG mobile players have a different server than mobile players? I just feel they have an advantage. Thanks very much, KillerCare513. Uh, controversy corner, but no, obviously I don't agree with that. Uh, the idea is actually more based around new devices versus old devices uh, because there are many different facets to the gameplay. The best spray control in the entire universe is by mobile phone players who use gyro and have it set up like gods. The idea that um, someone with really small hands is just going to jiggle around on a phone with five, four fingers, eight fingers is, is real. Uh, there are so many different facets to this. The big issue you should be thinking of is old devices versus new devices. That's the real issue. Low frames per second, lowering damage and things. But here's the other rub. If you make a queue for people that are just old devices and for people with new devices, there's two things that are going to happen. Queue times are going to go up, especially for game modes like FPP, which everyone will hate. And anyone that hacks is not going to tell you what device they're really on. So you're going to end up with a pool of people with bad devices playing against guys who are on top end devices and cheating because that's the easiest way for them to win games and they'll come and make your life a misery so no I completely disagree with that is PUBG Mobile your full time job and or do you have had you another occupation no it's not my full it is my full time job rather and yeah I've been in uh, real estate I've been in music I've been in like looking after Down syndrome kids I've delivered pizzas I've done all the usual run-of-the-mill jobs that everyone does, you know, and things they hate, things they don't hate, things they do just to get by. Um, yeah, I've done a whole lot of different stuff. Do you think PUBG Mobile will bring in an Oceania server, David Lowell Mania? No, because it's just not enough people, mate. That's that's the brass tax of it. It's the same reason why, uh, you know, 
your queue times can be excessive in FPP. There's not enough people in FPP to play and make those queues perfect. Um, but if you play TPP, you just get queues constantly. The more people you have, the easier it is to do things. And we just don't have enough humans running around in the Oceania region to deserve a, uh, a server all our own. And even if we get it, like I've played in lots of games before where Oceania has got its own server. The server's like a ghost town because there's not enough people. So everyone just goes and plays the servers they were playing before because they'd rather have a game than no game at all. It's kind of nuts. Why the name the Bushka? Um, because, long story this one, and it's pretty weird. Well, not weird, it's just not what you think. Uh, when I was a little kid and I used to wrestle with my dad, my brother and I, you know, we'd, we'd try and smash him and he'd grab us and he'd give us, uh, and when he'd grab you, he'd like go, Bushka! And chuck you, chuck you down and, and give you, you know, an uppercut or something, like just when you play fighting. And um, when I made my first character in a game called uh, EverQuest, a long time ago, I just called it Bushka because I was I thought I'd never play that game. I was just playing it for a mate. Um, and yeah, it turns out I uh, stuck with that one for the next 20-odd years. Uh, Rolling Stones or Beatles? Mm, Beatles. Sorry. <laughs> uh, do you think TDM teaches close-range com combat, Samuel Kelly? Uh, I think it does, for FPP particularly. I think for TPP, it's just a waste of your time. Uh, I find TPP to just be whoever is behind combat and gets to strafe out first wins. Like, that's... Tell me where the difference is in that. But especially with the way online gaming works, desync is an issue. So if you strafe out first, you're hitting the server first as the guy that's coming out and the other guy doesn't see you. So there's just this inherent advantage in TPP to playing passively. So practicing close quarters is like practice strafing out sideways and firing from the hip. Doesn't really excite me, sorry. Why aren't you playing with seven or eight fingers to be more faster? I just don't see the, the benefit from it. The kind of diminishing return, um, playing with a three finger claw versus playing with an eight, uh, like six fingers versus four fingers versus eight fingers. Like, I just don't see it. Like you can jump up in the air at one point and fire, right? That's, that's fair enough. So that's two buttons being used there. And then you can aim while you're doing that and you can nothing else there's nothing else so it's three fingers is the maximum joy you're going to get there and when what are your other five fingers doing it's like i i just don't i think the return on it is very very marginal and certainly not worth the effort to go in and learn how to do it are you planning on pushing to conquer a tpp or fpp in the next season i feel you could easily reach there by the way you play or outthink your enemies i'm not no i don't have the time to grind um if it was just me playing the game for the pure joy of the game, I would certainly do it. But anyone will tell you who runs a couple of YouTube channels, getting content out there is really difficult to keep up with the demand and produce enough so that YouTube's algorithm will actually hit your channel occasionally and suggest you. And especially when you're going up against 3 million sub YouTube, Indian YouTube channels, it's just really hard. Uh, to grind Conqueror and things like that would take a lot of time and it wouldn't produce content that I could use regularly for this kind of stuff. Like, in the last two days, I've spent six to eight hours in a training room with patrons getting data for you guys so that the web page is updated. Um, I've played with my mates on North American FPP servers. I've played with my mates on the Asia server in FPP. When I can't get a game in those two because there's just not enough people online and the queues are long, I am playing TPP solos or FPP solos. And it's like six different queues. And there's no way I can rate in that. I've, I've ground up to ace a bunch of times, but that's really, even now, that's just not happening. I, I just don't have time to grind content. Um, which is unfortunate. I'd love to. But at the same time, I've played at those kind of levels before and there are a lot of good players at those levels. There are also a lot of players who just get go for rating and don't know how to play. You could get that. You can get those titles pretty easily if you're willing to not engage. <coughs> and we all know that you go and get killed by guys with 400 games in TPP squads and they've got 1.1 kill death ratio on their ace. It's like, well, really? Like, is is that something that I would enjoy doing? I don't think, I think I'd rather poke my eyeballs out with blunt sticks, to be honest. So no, I won't be grinding rating anytime soon. And this is 10 seasons for me. I've well and truly passed feeling the need to prove myself to anyone who's just picked the game up in the last few months. 
Balil Shahid, what's up with your vocabulary? I mean, how did you develop it? I read a lot, man. Um, one of my favorite things in the world to do is read a book. If I'm going to get a coffee and I'm in the queue, I'm not looking at my phone, I'm reading a book. Uh, if I am going to bed at night, I'm not watching TV, I'm reading a book. I'd go through, um, you know, probably a book a week and have done for the past 25 30 years. I love reading ever since I was a little kid. When I was at school, um, my parents actually got called in because I really love sports and I was good at sports too at school. Um, I'm a big guy and I was pretty athletic. I could jump. I could, I, when I was at my peak, man, I could do a 360 dunk, alley oop, reverse everything. Uh, but nowadays I'm a fat old bloke and I just read. When I was at school, I got, I got in trouble. My parents got called in because the teacher thought I had some kind of social disability or issue because when everyone else would go and play at lunch I was off uh, I remember I was in year three and I was reading the Chronicles of Thomas Covenant by Stephen Donaldson and it was on book light like, number four and I'd, I'd been taking them off my auntie's bookshelf and they were worried that there was something wrong with me and it wasn't I was just like I enjoy reading my book more than hanging out with those wankers so that was kind of where it was at but I didn't never like for confidence however uh, what are your interests and hobbies other than PUBG? What's your favorite places you've traveled to? What's your favorite food? Thank you very much, Avika. Um, interests and hobbies, obviously music, guitar. Um, that's a big one for me. Basketball. My son and I love basketball. I shoot a lot of hoops with him. I play a lot of basketball with him. I played. I was addicted to golf for a long time until I started doing this, and I just don't have... I gave up golf because there's no time when you're this in-depth in something to play four or five hours at a time of, of golf. Um, surfing, I've been a surfer all my life, but I don't surf a lot these days. Um, reading, obviously, we just talked about that. Um, you know, hanging out with the missus and, and my son and my eldest when he's in town. Uh, those are the things I kind of really, really enjoy. My favorite places I've traveled to, I've been all over the world. I've been very, very lucky. Um, in the States, there's, I didn't really like LA in the States. I didn't like Las Vegas, but I loved New York. New York for me was just awesome uh i loved i've been to mexico before i've been all through europe barcelona barcelona was probably my favorite european city right up there with uh, i really like stuttgart surprisingly love stuttgart chamonix is wonderful in france um spent a lot of time in the uk and and all that bali is freaking awesome new zealand is incredible too but i'd probably say new york oh, i just love new york the the whole vibe the excitement the there's always something going on and and that that was that was really really huge for me and uh what's your favorite food i don't really have a favorite food man i just love uh love getting out there and, and getting into it how hard is it to play on asia crown tier in tpp or even fpv um by the way love you grub thank you very much amigo um yeah i think asia is probably a tougher server than na but not by a whole hell of a lot and to be honest it's also definitely got more hackers like there's just no way around this there's there's more people that i've found hacking against me on asia than na by a fair bloody margin um and more overt hackers as well like it's just you can't miss them they're jumping over buildings and that kind of crap uh i've played to ace in tpp i think two or three times now and I've done a lot of solo squad vids and they're on the channel here and they're just not like they they there's there's less about the actual tier you're in and more about the quality of people in the game itself. You will get games that are really really tough and they're low, lower tier than ace tier and you'll also get games of, and this is especially true in FPP uh, where FPP people don't give a crap about their rating. People are dropping for the gunfights, for the gunplay. Um, and for the dynamic nature of the gameplay. So you will get guys that have got Conqueror in past seasons just permanently fixated in Diamond all season because they're dropping boot camp and they're dropping their, you know, versus 20 people. Um, I'll, I'll show you a clip. Watch this. This is FPP on NA. Like, this is Diamond here. Everyone knows what they're doing. There's full squads. They're all using voice comms and they're coming to the middle and they're not coming to the middle because they want to get rating. They're coming to the middle because this is awesome fun. 
And uh, I think the difference between TPP and FPP like that is just night and day. So I, look, I'm an advocate for FPP the whole time. Listen to this. This is not what you get on a TPP hot drop of boot camp. You get in a TPP hot drop in this situation, every squad grabs a building, they hug a window, and they look out in third-party peak to find out what's going down. So the two modes of gameplay are completely different. And I think um, you probably find that there's a bigger difference in tiers as you go up in TPP than there is as you go up in FPP because FPP is kind of like an everyman's gameplay mode. You get video like this where you're going to see in a sec, there's a squad's going to push me. And they know who I am because... On the plane on a NA, if I jump on the plane, everyone's like, oh, Bushka, how are you doing? What's going on? How are you going? Blah, 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 blah. And then they'll push me. <laughs> like, we're going to have fun. And I know it's going to happen. And I'm there because this is good content. Like, how much better is a gameplay mode like this where you're going to have this insane burst of, you know, everyone being aggressive and pushing and having to gunfight versus everyone just third-party peeking and waiting for people to, to just you know, make the mistake of being aggressive and pushing out in the open. And for me, that's why I really do appreciate the question because it's a good platform to talk about this. That, uh, And let's be honest, PUBG Mobile are never going to change this because they don't want TPP players finding out about FPP. They don't want TPP players playing FPP because you're not going to sell a whole load of crates to guys who play FPP and are looking for new outfits because you can't see them. Like, I can see my hands. That's about it. Here we go. Going to get pushed. And these boys were great too. Um, they were really, really good. Let's listen to this one. Here we go. You have to you have to pre-fire. Excellent. Here we go. Yep. <laughs> like, I'm so sorry I thirsted. And then the next one, and I'm reloading. And the third one comes through the door. And there's a, like, that is, that's a squad push, right? That's, that's all good players. But we're playing diamond on FPP towards the end of the season, right? And like, I'm saying sorry for thirsty you guys. And they're like, there's no problem. Rock on. Let's have a good time and blah, 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 blah. It, like, this is this is Diamond 3 FPP on NA. Like, everyone knows what they're doing. People are playing with voice comms. They're all sweating hard, but we're being aggressive. Whereas you do that in TPP, it's not the same feel. Uh, I just want to know your gaming setup and how you edit your PUBG videos. Always a lot of content. This is the future. Thank you very, very much. Um, my gaming setup is pretty simple. I've got the iPad Pro 12, uh, 2019. Tw iPad Pro 12.9 inch, right? And then I connect that via a lightning cable into an iMac. Uh, it's a good iMac too. It is, um, you know, it's, it's a reasonably strong device. It's the iMac 5K Retina. 27 inch, uh, 4.2 gigahertz Intel Core i7, 24 gigabytes of 2400 mAh megahertz DDR4, and a Radeon Pro 580, uh, 8.2 gig graphics card in it. Um, I've got a bunch of storage as well. I've got terabytes and terabytes of storage because I do use a lot of that. And then I record in QuickTime on my iMac. Then I save that, that's at 1600 by 1200. So it's really good high quality footage with excellent sound. And I record that in QuickTime and then I edit it in a thing called Final Cut Pro, an editing suite called Final Cut Pro, which is a great, great suite for me and it's seamless the way Apple does all this together for me. Apple's very frustrating as well with the way they handle sound. It's not nearly as good as Windows, but I digress. And that's um, that's pretty much my rig, my loadout and how I go about that. When I stream, I use OBS and I stream using OBS and a bunch of third-party things like uh, stream I use streamlabs yeah streamlabs anyway there you go why don't you join a professional team oh god bless you Le Hamza um, one I'm, I'm not really good enough to to warrant that kind of attention and two I'd have to learn to play exclusively on a telephone and three I would have to put in huge huge hours into the game um, I don't have that kind of time. It's the same reason that I don't have time to grind content. I don't have time to just scrimmage and learn the ins and outs and strats of a pro team. Um, and it would be and it would be really unfair on anyone in that team to expect them to just carry my ass along without putting the same kind of effort in. I am looking at possibly doing one of the star kind of challenge things. Uh, Goose from Simplicity asked me about that, and I said, look. I'll have a crack at it if you boys want. Uh, but, uh, I mean, that's that ball's in their court, and I don't really have the time to 
devote to it that a lot of people do. Uh, it'll be fun. It'll be a great giggle. Um, the other one th- that I also do want to point out here uh, is like there's not a huge return in terms of cash for professional players. And when we say professional players, like, you know, if you're earning a living from it, that's one thing. But no, there's not a lot of these guys earning a living from PUBG Mobile. And that's uh, it's not, not justifiable to the wife to say, hey, I'm off to seek my fame and fortune as a middle of the road. Uh, tournament player for PUBG Mobile. I don't think that's going to float. As a content creator, it's easy to get caught up in the grind and forget playing for your own sake. What is your proudest in-game moment this year? Um, actually, I know exactly what you mean, Irma, and g'day, Irma. Irma's a, a great uh, mate of mine from World of Tanks Blitz, another YouTube channel I have, Bushka on Blitz. You might have seen that one. It's got 65,000 subs. The, um, the, the most proud moment this year was the... <laughs> The pistols only uh, duo that Ammo and I had versus squads in Pachinki, where we cleared Pachinki by just running around on rooftops doing the most outrageous rubbish with a couple of 1911s. Uh, that was the most fun I've had, or one of the most fun things I've done, but it was certainly the thing I was proudest of. Uh, your honest opinion on the worst Royal Pass? Uh, I think the current one we've got is rubbish. Um, I, I was really had high hopes for it. But the thing is, um, for me, it's the crates that make or break it. Uh, and I like gun skins. And if I don't get gun skins, there's not really a whole lot of point for me in in the Royal Pass because I like playing FPP. That's what I want is gun skins. Uh, so the more gun skins, the better the Royal Pass. And obviously, they've really gone and tempered out the gun skins. There's a lot more outfits, it feels like now, than gun skins. Um, yeah, there you go. Been watching you from the old days when you had hour-long videos on Blitz. My question is, do you think you made the right decision to stop your old job to do this YouTube full-time? And were you ever at a point during the whole YouTube thing where you thought, this isn't going to work anymore? Is your YouTube kicking you? Cheers, mate. Merry Christmas to all. Small but thick. Thanks very much, mate. Um, no, not really. I, uh, I'm certain I made the right decision to quit my old job. Uh, there's no way in the world that I've looked back from that. Have I ever been at the point where I didn't think it was going to work? Well, I mean, it's like any job. It's just like any job. You have days where things go great and you punch the air and you're like, I kicked a massive goal. This has been a really successful day. And you have other days where it feels like you're treading water. And it's not that I don't enjoy the job at all, all the time. It's that it's challenging. Like the, I don't think a lot of people understand how much work goes in to keeping a channel uh, not just active, but like vibrant um, and, and building a community and, and constantly maintaining that. It's really, really full on. And it's, I've alluded to it in the whole not grinding rating, not joining professional teams and all that kind of thing. Uh, and that's not hubris. Like, I, I don't think I'm good enough for that. Let's just get that out of the way. Uh, but. It's hard work at times. You know, I'm about to go away on holidays and I'm, I've am i got to do so many videos and so much stuff and it's going to mean that I'm pulling all-nighters for the next two nights to get that done. And at the end of the day, you'll just see a video drop every once in a while and know that the channel's still alive. But for me, that's my job. And if I'm going to go on holidays with my wife, then before I do it, I've got to work, you know, double the hours which isn't easy for me and it's not easy for her. And I think you'll find that a lot of people don't understand that this is not just playing a game. Like the game and getting the content is one thing and then the grinding and the editing and the learning new skills, that's that's another thing. It's exciting and it's challenging. Even when it's tough, you're still doing something that feels worth doing. I'm going to stop it there, guys, because we're at 23 minutes. If you want to hear any more, let me know. I'll leave some comments down below. I'm sorry for those of you whose questions I didn't get to, but we had over 200 questions today. And I actually have a lot more that I just didn't get to, but I don't know how we're going to go here. I don't know if anyone's going to be interested in watching this. So let me know. Look after yourselves, please, over this holiday season. There is no need to go crazy. Just take it easy. Relax. If you're working, just work through it all. And uh, come back next year, revitalize, energize, and let's do it all again. I'm Bushka. Look after yourselves. Bye for now, and stay safe on the battlefield.